y'all. I'm Hannah. And I'm Jeremy. And we are the Savory Suitcase. Yeah. And today we are making shepherd's pie. Yeah. But it is low carb. It is low carb and it is technically keto. Mmm. Yes. Shepherd's pie is one of those things that I always think of like during cooler weather. Yeah, like a nice warm filling meal. Yeah. yeah. Nice yeah. and cozy. Yeah. Um, it's not really cold here, but nope, it's Florida. You know, seventy six today. I think. Yeah, yeah, it comes and goes sometimes. So yeah. if you're where it is cooler outside, you might enjoy this as a nice substitute yeah. for a more heavy meal. You know, full of mashed potatoes. It's got all those peas and carrots. But uh, somebody has a little secret, right? To make yeah. it low carb. Yeah. So instead of potatoes, we're actually going to do it with mashed cauliflower. And typically, uh, classically, it's, you use ground beef or a mixture of ground beef, pork, and lamb or something to that effect. We're going to use ground turkey. And if cauliflower can be pizza, you can be anything you want to yes, be. Yes, in a world in a world where cauliflower can be pizza, you can be anything you want to be. So this is us. We are filming our first vlog of 2021. It is New Year's Day. Yeah. It is the evening of New Year's Day. Uh, I have to look at my watch. I don't even know hardly what, <laughs> what day or time it is anymore. Yeah, but you guys actually just saw our Kissimmee Prairie State Park yeah. video last yeah. week where we ended in quarantine. So we're glad to say that quarantine yes. is over. We, uh, we are out of quarantine. Took our COVID test. The holidays are over. We're negative. Yeah. So yeah. So we 2021 are... off to a off to a good start. <laughs> Hopefully. Um, you'll have to let us know. This is also our first vlog using some new equipment that we yeah, got. We, we have did. a ring light. We got a ring light and a uh, Rode Video Go microphone. Yeah. So hopefully the sound um, in this video is going to be a little bit better for you, not so echoey, um, and you can hear my beautiful voice just a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you guys can hear that in the background, I'm heating up some water. Yeah. Um, the new sous chef has been employed now for uh, for a few weeks. This is his first official gig. Yeah, so he we're is hoping, laying behind me right now. So we're hoping he'll do okay. We're trying to teach him teach him to you know pause off the counter and everything. No he's counter still a puppy, surfing. so you know he's still learning the rules of the household. But we miss our Max every single yeah. day. But uh, but Henry's proving to be a, a good addition yeah. for to our home. Yeah. So. so. All right. Let's get so, started. Where are we gonna start first? I think we're gonna start with. I have no idea. That's yeah. up to you. Yeah, it is, huh? So. It's all my choice. Uh, that's interesting. So let's make some cauliflower. Yeah. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do, now that we've got all of our ingredients out here, I'm gonna go ahead and start cooking the, mic the cauliflower in the microwave uh, to make our cauliflower mash. So while that's going, we're gonna do a couple other things. Follow the instructions on the package. So I'm gonna cook these for like five or six minutes just until they're like tender and steamed through it. Okay, so the ingredients, the other ingredients that you're gonna need for your cauliflower mash, I keep it super, super simple. Um, I actually buy uh, a package of Philadelphia chive and onion cream cheese. It's a, like just a flavored whipped cream cheese. You can certainly use a low fat, non fat Neufchatel or uh, any other flavor you might like. If there's like a garden veggie, um, I just use this because it you know, it's a, it's a good garlic and herb sort of flavor. Um, so you're gonna need a container of this. This is a, this is a seven and a half ounce container. Uh, and then I've got some shredded cheddar cheese, whatever variety type brand that you prefer. Um, and then I've got some fresh garlic that I'm gonna use in it as well. Uh, and then just your basic salt, pepper. If I need to adjust the thickness, which usually I don't, um, I'll use a little bit of heavy cream or some almond milk or something like that. So our, our cauliflower is cooking to make the mash. I'm gonna go ahead and start browning my ground turkey. So you just wanna get a pan on a medium high heat on your stove, uh, add in a little bit of olive oil, a couple tablespoons, and we're gonna brown this up. Okay, so while our ground turkey is starting to cook and brown, uh, our cauliflower is steaming in the microwave, I'm gonna go ahead and chop up this onion I'm gonna chop up some garlic as well. Okay, so my cauliflower is good and hot. Um, it is out of the microwave, so we're going to go ahead and cut our bags open. We're going to drop it into the food processor. Okay, 
so we've got our cauliflower into the food processor. We're gonna take these garlic cloves and we're gonna drop these in as well. If your cauliflower has a hard time starting to kind of blend down, you can grab some heavy cream and stream it into the top and that'll help pull it all down into the blades. We'll see how it goes. Insert loud noise here. Okay, so my turkey is done cooking, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove it from the heat here for just a second while I get ready to finish my cauliflower mash. While that's blending, we're gonna cook our uh, onions, our garlic, our peas and carrots, and our corn. We're gonna saute those, and we're just gonna keep on moving along. Okay, so now that our turkey is out of the bowl and that's uh, just resting for a couple minutes, I've got my the same pan I used for the turkey back on the stove with a little bit more olive oil. And we're gonna saute up the onions and the garlic. Now you're not looking to get color or anything, you're just looking to kind of sweat these things down and pull all the flavor out of them. We're gonna open up our peas and carrots and our corn. And once these onions and this garlic has a couple seconds to sweat out, we're gonna add these in and saute them right along with it. Now that our cauliflower is all one consistent texture that you're seeing, uh, we're gonna add our cream cheese and our shredded cheddar. I'm gonna add about a cup. Again, you could, if you like it more cheesy, you can add more. If you want a little bit less on the dairy, you can also certainly add less as well. Um, that's kind of, again, to your preference. Um, you definitely do wanna add cheese though because that is gonna kinda help bind it and keep it from being too wet and watery. And then I'm gonna take about a cup's worth of shredded cheddar to start. Um, you are gonna probably need at least a two cup bag um, because the shepherd's pie gets a little shredded cheddar on top before you bake it as well. So please keep that in mind. So I'm gonna take about a cup's worth and drop that in. I'm gonna go ahead and set this back up. Okay, so we let this run, the food processor run for just a couple of minutes to get it nice and smooth. So we're gonna take the lid off and essentially, your call, wow, it? Uh, essentially your cauliflower mash is done. It's ready to go. Um, and it's gonna do a little bit of additional cooking inside the oven. Um, but yeah, your cauliflower mash is done. Our veggie mixture's going, turkey's done. We're almost there. So it definitely needs some salt. Um, personally, I would probably add a little bit more cheese, but we're gonna leave it a little light. We'll maybe put a little more cheese on top. But it does have a nice onion, garlicky sort of flavor. And you can taste the cauliflower. I mean, let's, let's be real. Um, but think about how many calories and carbs that you're saving by using cauliflower instead of a white potato. Uh, so you're gonna leave yourself with way more energy, way more calories for the rest of your day. Um, and it's just overall a more healthy choice. Yes, the fat content's a little bit higher because of all the dairy and the cheese. Um, but think about the carbs, the complex carbohydrates that you're saving. It's really worth it. And when you can learn how to make a good cauliflower mashed potato, honestly, you'll never need regular mashed potatoes again. So this is ready to go. We're gonna let this sit aside. And our turkey is ready. We're gonna go back to our veggie mixture over here. So our veggies are mostly tender. I'm gonna go ahead and add our turkey back in. Okay, so our veggie mixture with our turkey is done. We're gonna set that aside. Our cauliflower mash is done. We're making good headway. And the last thing we have to do is make our beef gravy mixture. So what you can do is multiple different things. We're gonna do it a, a, little, bit, a little bit more of a, not difficult, but a little bit more involved sort of a way. Um, you could buy pre-made gravy if you'd like. Um, my way does take a little bit out of the away from the ketoness of it because I'm even gonna use a little bit of flour to thicken it. You can use xanthan gum, you can use cornstarch, um, but we are gonna add some carbs there. Uh, and then I know that there are some carbs and some and peas and carrots as well, but those are healthier carbs, you know, the vitamins and minerals that you get from them um, paired up with a small amount of flour that we're gonna use. 
does make this dish overall keto because in the grand scheme with the volume that this is going to make, uh, it is a very minute amount that you will consume. Um, so, but just like any, any, just like any food that does contain carbohydrates, you want to be mindful of your portion control. So we're going to go ahead and make our beef gravy. So I've got a pot here. We're going to take this pot and I've got a, um, a beef base, a, a, a stock paste. So this is just a concentrated beef stock. Um, you can buy beef stock and thicken it, but we're going to actually just make the stock real quick. So I'm just going to take a couple of tablespoons. So if you're using a stock base, just follow the instructions on the packaging telling you how much to use to how much water. So that it's the proper, it's the proper like level of flavor and saltiness. Um, so if you're gonna make your own stock, you're gonna do my method here. You can buy your own beef stock or you can buy beef gravy ready-made. So we're gonna add in two cups of hot water. I've already got it hot here uh, from our kettle. So we're gonna add about two cups of water. You wanna make a good make a good amount or have a good amount of your gravy um, because you, it, this is what's gonna moisten and bring together all your vegetables and your turkey. Um, certainly if you would, I know that we're using ground turkey. If you wanna use a turkey gravy or a turkey base, you can do that as well. I just like the flavor of the beef without having all the calories and fat from using ground. So you're gonna take your whisk and we're just gonna whisk this paste into the water. So the heat from the water is gonna dissolve the beef paste. Now, at this point, you wanna check your, um, you wanna check the concentration. If it's too salty, too much, you can add a little bit more water, make it the flavor and the level, uh, the consistency that you like. This is good, not too salty. Good. So, at this point, we're gonna put this on the stove, and I'm just gonna bring this up to a boil. And while this is boiling, I'm going to make a paste out of some butter and a little bit of flour um, to thicken this up. You can see, you can see it's nice and smooth. It's just flour and butter. So this is just a little bit of a different way from making a roux. So instead of making the roux in the pan, you're just gonna make it separately. Um, this is a different process called, make it, you're making it like it's called a liaison. Um, so you're just gonna add this to your uh, stock or your heated liquid um, and basically make what's called a velouté sauce, which is, we could talk about other sauces, but uh, this is known as a velouté. So what's important to note is that you want to just add a little bit of your thickener at a time until it's the right consistency. Um, and then you want to let it come back up to a boil and let it roll out a boil for a couple of minutes uh, to cook out the raw flour. Okay, so the hard part's over. Our gravy is made. Our mash is ready to go. Our meat and veggie mixture is ready to go. So now we're gonna pull everything together and we're gonna build our shepherd's pie. Okay, so in this pan, again, we have our turkey, our garlic, our onion, peas and carrots, our corn. And I have not seasoned any of this because again, this is heavily seasoned, the gravy. So once we add our gravy, then we're gonna taste the mixture and if we need to adjust, we can. You wanna add enough gravy to moisten the mixture you just want to stir to combine everything together, making as few dirty dishes as possible, less work for you. Uh, you will have some cleanup time while this is in the oven, but who needs to wash dishes, right? You want to crack open a nice cold beer or a glass of wine while you're waiting for dinner, or wrangle the kids or puppy, you know, whatever you, whatever you got. So you can see that this is nice and thick, nice and moist. Um, with our gravy mixture. So from here, once everything is nice and combined, we are going to take our nine by 13 casserole dish and we are going to add this in. Pan's mostly full and that's okay. The mashed cauliflower, the mashed cauliflower just is basically goes on top as a topping. So because this is a little bit thinner than a mashed potato, you wanna be careful and just kind of gently lay it all over the top. OK, 
Okay, you wanna be really careful not to push the cauliflower down and mix it into the beef. You want them to be um, noticeably separated layers. So you can use your spatula. Y'all, so Hannah's back for the important part. You're my favorite part. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and give it a taste. See what it's like. It's still really hot. It's really good. Try and get a little bit of everything. Oh yeah, the mash, mm -hmm. the cauliflower, mm -hmm. and the cheese. Mm -hmm. The corn is crispy. The peas and carrots still have texture. You can't even tell that it's cauliflower. Mm -mm. Once it's all together with the garlic and then you really can't yeah. tell. Good job, babe. Hey, thanks. I try. I try. So you're really cutting out a lot of calories. Again, I know there's peas, there's corn, there's carrots. But sometimes um, it's nice to have a few vegetables. It makes you feel mm -hmm. healthy. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So, yeah, nice, warm, cool, rainy, snow day sort of dish. Yeah. Um, this will last all week for sure. Reheats really well. You can freeze it to meal plan. I mean, you know, it's simple and you can change it up too. Like we've added green, uh, chopped up green beans to the veggies. You could, you know, you can add other vegetables if you'd like. Um, really, you could do any ground meat that you like. You can yeah. season it however you want. I mean, this is just a basic kind of platform for how to make it. Okay, so if you guys make this at home, take a picture, post it on social media, and tag us at The Savory Suitcase, either on Facebook or Instagram. Yeah, we'd love to see it. Yeah, we really wanna see how this comes out for you or what adaptation that you've done. Let us know what you liked, if you changed something up and it was good. Um, yeah, but let us know. Uh, please comment, like, and subscribe on this video. It really helps us out, it helps us grow. Um, we did hit our goal for 2020 of getting to 250 by hitting 262 subscribers. 263 today. 263, oop, I'm behind yeah. one. So we really do, from the bottom of our hearts, we want to thank you guys as always for following us, and we'll see you next time. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. It's time for dinner. Bye. Sous chef didn't try. <laughs>